let's get started. Um, so as I mentioned, I, I work as a business developer, especially in QPR, and I am very, very excited that you are all here uh, to hear, uh, get some takeaways, some learning points about the pros mining to get a bit of understanding uh, what we do in the field and how you can use, uh, potentially use this information and the software in your operations. So just a bit of an overview of what you can expect from this webinar. Uh, I'm first going to talk about just in just generally speaking, what is meant with process mining the methodology and like why you should use it. And then we'll get to the practical part where I'm going to talk about how how to use process mining. So starting from like how you can use process mining to discover your as is processes. Uh, how can you use process mining to identify the most important issues and uh, with compliance, uh, with long lead times, and of course, understanding the sub parts of your organization. What are the differences between, uh, let's say, different teams, different uh, office, uh, like, uh, like locations, how they operate, where, where are the similarities, where are the differences? And of course, finally, to understand a bit how you can use process mining in the long-term monitoring of your operations and how um, how you can use different sort of dashboarding that relates directly to your own data. And we'll see uh, how much time we'll have, but uh, you can we will have as in a Q&A. I will be answering all of your questions, and as Jens said, uh, you can post questions in the uh, question box uh, at any time, and we'll go through them at the end of the presentation. So, what is process mining? Process mining is, uh, in in very simplistic and very simplified terms, process mining is just get about this very raw data from your uh, databases and uh, what what are these databases so essentially every single operation creates data we all know that there is a gazillion bytes of data created every single day and this data and the the sort of activities with their timestamps they're recorded in in our uh, erp systems in crm systems and our business process management systems and what process mining does is that it takes this raw data and it makes an automatic calculation, automatic visualization of how the process looks based on the actual data, actual timestamps and the recordings that are in the system. So why, why is this important? Uh, well, first of all, every, every single uh, organization has a certain idea or a certain design, certain understanding of what they think the process looks like. So when we think about service managers, so this is an example from a ServiceNow uh, uh, track. Uh, so we might think that, yeah, like the, ideally the process looks like this. They are, you, you start with the service, you create an internal task, you open the task, so meaning that you give it to a certain expert to take Okay, like a service request or a ticket, uh, you start working working on the case, you resolve the case, you close the service, the customer is happy, we move on, and then you uh, internally close the ticket and uh, hopefully you have ended the service before you were supposed to end the service so that you are within your service level agreement. This is the ideal state and this is what we think is happening. When you look at the actual data, what you will see is that it is it is not that simple. In reality, the process can uh, look something like this. So you, you have certain deviations, uh, you have uh, a lot of different paths that the service can actually take and you, you're skipping steps. You might have some like uh, you're coming back to a previous step and then it's it's really hard to say what is the what is the real process, and um, you you have certain bottlenecks going on, and uh, you have kind of a a lot of variation 
in your actual process. Um, besides the fact that with process money you can visualize this, you can also do a bit of drill downs. So let's say that you want to have a bit of an understanding of certain behavior. What are the what are the connections between different process steps? Uh, what how can we see the uh, causation correlation relationships in the process? So, for example, in this screenshot, I have um, made this inquiry of what is happening in the process. Besides, I have here state awaiting user info. So we can see from here, for example, that from the in the in the ticket services where you have state awaited user info, you also have a tendency to have a state awaited vendor. You have uh, this state active uh, happening a lot. You see a lot of back looping and this is distribution of cases. This is where we start getting a bit of an understanding of what's going on and what are the next steps to take. Before I get into more detail about how you can do all of this, I'll just want to share this uh, one uh, article or more of a, a snapshot of it. So this is in the Harvard Business Review uh, article by Thomas uh, H. Davenport and Andrew Spani. Uh, what process mining is and why companies should do it. So. And I really recommend reading the whole article. You can just Google it, you will find it. Um, the essence of this is that um, what a lot of companies tend to do, they, they always think about how can we improve? How can we go forward? How, what, what steps can we take to improve our profits and cut costs and just uh, improve the customer service experience? Uh, what companies in this thinking tend to fail to do is to first think about where are we now because if you have ever worked in any lean or other improvement projects the first step to do before you start thinking about um, where should we go what is the desired future state what like um, what are the goals before you do that you have to understand what is your current state of operations and like you need to have a bit of a starting point, a benchmark. And uh, what you do with Prosman in this case is to give you the end-to-end -end visibility of what is actually going on, because you really cannot you cannot improve unless you know where you are. And uh, as here I have highlighted in the quote is that. As a result, some companies tend to either skip current process analysis altogether, adopt shortcuts to it, or pay consultants a lot of money to analyze as is process. And with process mining tools such as Process Analyzer, you can skip outsourcing altogether. And just generally speaking, it is better to do this kind of analysis internally, as you familiarize yourself with your with uh, with your own process. Uh, get a bit of a deeper understanding what is actually going on and when you have the powerful combination of uh, knowing uh, the process knowledge which you might have just from uh, owning the process as a process owner and having the right tools this gives you a lot of capability to figure out what to do next so starting off uh, so th there's a three-step process to this uh, like roughly speaking. The first step is to discover your assist process. You really want to understand what's going on and uh, of course just kind of a, also get a common understanding among your team in, in your organization. Uh, have a fact-based discussion of what's actually going on, not what people think is going on, but what does the data say. So we have some options here in the process analyzer, uh, how you can do this. You can have an uh, analysis on duration, you have sort of case profiling analysis, you can do root cause analysis, uh, like flows, and well, maybe it's better if I just demonstrate what I'm talking about. So I will now go to the, this is the QPR process analyzer. This is how it looks like when you log in. So. You ha we have different options. We have the process discovery, we have the conformance checking, 
clustering analysis, NSPPN, model management workspace, and so on. When we go to, well, I click here in the dark blue box home, here we have a list of pre-made uh, dashboards we can use. But for now, before I get there, I will focus on process discovery. So in process discovery, uh, what we have is uh, these two panel analysis. On the left side, we have the flowchart. I have now selected the uh, data model ServiceNow incident management uh, from ServiceNow. In the flowchart, you can have this as simple as you want, uh, the visualization to as complex you want. And here to demonstrate what I showed in the PowerPoint, this might be like this, the simple idea how you think it looks, but when we actually open open this up, uh, we have all these event types which are listed over here. These are all, all the different process steps that are happening in your organization. And while you might think that is quite linear, like you have the task created, task open, the active result closed and closed, uh, we have a lot of other activities also happening and how the process analyzer figures this out uh, it, it basically if we look at the here the events analysis in the events this is basically the complete event log of what's happening in the process and this are like a there's a event log is based on case ids so these might be the ticket numbers or like incident numbers and you can just look at the individual case just click over here i can see from the flow chart that this is roughly how it looks i can see from here i'll just do an additional setting over here to show the 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 uh all the events so what we can see from from this view is that we have the awaiting user info awaiting vendor happening twice we can verify that from here that there's a bit of a looping going on and um just a, like that's like one example what you can do with this i'll do a, just a very quick run through of how you can take additional angles to analyzing your as is process so for example what i can do is go to the case attribute profiling i have all these different case attributes case attributes are basically uh additional information on all of the service tickets so we might have like uh how many cases do we have uh per certain companies or this could be departments for example we have the assigned uh the assigned teams so we can see from here that internal team five has about five thousand nine hundred uh tickets that they are they are um working on or have worked on and you can just get about this very quick glance on the distribution of cases get a bit of an analysis on uh where uh which part of the organization are contributing most to like the serving the tickets uh, what you can also do here and this is the beauty of the software uh, you can uh, you can do the analysis anywhere from very high level uh, understanding of the whole organization all the way to well I already showed you how you can pick like a one one single ticket you'll see how it looks you can check the bottlenecks so for example well this one doesn't have to have bottlenecks but let's take this one for example so i see so we have the case id case start case end average uh, the duration of the case what's the last uh, event type so event types are these blue boxes number of events and uh, number of event types and now that I picked this one case, which has a duration of 151 days, what I can do here is I'll just broaden broaden this full picture over here. I'll take a look and I can see here that we have quite a bit of back and forth. We see that there's a lot of waiting uh, on the vendor. And uh, if we just kind of take a look I see that there's also a lot of a lot of 
process steps. So there not, might not be one individual super long um, process step. Well, except over here. Uh, so there is this one flow. So this is the column for duration from previous event. So there is this one where we will go from awaiting for vendor to awaiting user info. This took roughly four months. So that's the bottleneck of this case. When you look at the all the other process flows, it, they didn't take nearly as much time. So we have identified our bottleneck on this case. Well, coming back to the uh, case attribute values. So as I said, well, we can do the analysis from anywhere from very, very high to very detailed. And using case attribute profiling is something, something from the between we can look at the process flow of individual teams. So this is where we come to dynamic filtering. And I can look at the internal team 18. Their process looks something like this. I'll just uh, simplify the uh, flow chart a bit so we get a bit of a better grasp of what it is. So we can see the internal team 18 has uh, about 4,300 cases. And this is their individual flow. Um, there is also, we have, we can do a bunch of trend counts. So now I have the case count trend and we can see the distribution of the cases over time. And I can change this granularity very easily from the drop down menu so we have better understanding of what is the distribution of cases over time. Uh, my personal favorite is the variation analysis because you can get a bit about distribution so we have many different deviations of the case so for example from here like uh, we see that out of the case that i have filtered uh so in total when you look at the total data set and all the combination of flows and uh, like how what are the chains of events what are the combinations of chains of events i can see uh, from the variation analysis that we have this variation which is 18,500 cases roughly the average duration is about seven days and we see that it's very clean case because there's as many event occurrences as there are event types so it's a very straightforward case we have a uh, task created, task open, state active, resolved, closed, and closed. So this is like the most common path you have. But the variation on this, you can also look at the different deviations. So let's say that I would like to take a look at some cases which are taking quite a few steps. So I can take a look at this one. This seems like a troublemaker. I'm just gonna open that. I can see that like this is the chain of events overall how it looks and um, what i can gather when i combine combine the uh the with other analysis tools what i can see uh from here so we have one variation and in this variation we have the 18,000 cases um well i'll just pick this one just for clarity's sake so I can see that there is a bit of a looping going on. And I'm sure you get the idea either way. So variation analysis is a great way to get a bit of an understanding of the process deviations. What are the most common process paths? What are the where are the happy paths? Uh, that that's a, like that's what the tool can do, but of course you it's, 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 it's not a magic wand. It will not tell you what is happy path. That's where your own uh, thinking power comes in. And it's just a, I, I, would, I would draw an analogy to Google in a sense. So Google itself will not tell all the answers unless you know how to ask the right questions. So there's a whole, like this comes back to kind of about the methodology and thinking and you always, when you start with the process mining, you always want to ask the right questions. The questions might be like, uh, where do we see the longest durations? So if I take a look at another analysis over here with the case durations, I see a distribution of different end-to-end -end, uh, case lengths. So again, I can change the granularity to days uh, to just get a bit of a 
more granular estimate, but let's say that I think that there's an issue of cases which are taking longer than two months. I can actually change that to months from here. So I want to look at cases which take two months or more. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a filtering of cases of this length. I'm going to open that and then I can take a look in the case attribute profiling where where is this kind of behavior happening more often? So here I have in London, we have uh, 460 cases, Kathmandu, we have 135. Uh, the empty value, so this is an unassigned, that this has not been assigned to any part of your location, so it might be something else, but in Helsinki, we have 112 cases. So this is a distribution of all the cases which last two, uh, anything between two and 12 months. So if, if, I, if I take this uh, filter rule away, I can see that London is in total is 10,000, so we can kind of estimate that uh, London has a certain percentage of cases which take longer than that. Okay, I think before I go further, I'll just go back to the PowerPoint. So what what I've done here is that um, so this was the first step of looking into your processes and kind of understanding your as is processes, what is happening and like uh, how what what you can do and well apparently i missed this slide but what i've done here i demonstrated the different tools within the process discovery uh tool uh itself uh, how you can do kind of this multifaceted analysis of your assets process based on the data that is in your model and uh, these are just some of the things you can do but I would also like to move to the other ways of understanding what's going on in your organization and in your uh, service processes. So, of course, once you understand what, what is the as is process, the next step is to identify what are the issues, where the issues are. So here comes the root cause analysis, which is patented by QPR, uh, the best in the market. Uh, what you can do with uh, root cause analysis is basically you you make um, a sort of a filter rule, which you, uh, you can do the analysis anywhere. So let's say that there is some uh, process step that uh, is un undesired behavior, or there are long end-to-end -end lead times. You can use root cause analysis to kind of identify where this is happening more often, what could be the reasons for certain behavior you don't want to see, or uh, uh, diversely, you can also do explore where are the good cases. But I'll I'll show you this in just a few seconds. So I'll just so I'll now I'll do the demonstration of how to use the root cause analysis and what it, what outcomes you can have have with it. So going back to the uh, pros analyzer itself, I'll do the so let's say that I would like to gain an understanding of uh, this phenomena of, uh, let's say, pending others' action. So there is there is this process step called state pending others' action. I would like to bit of a, get a bit of an understanding, like why is this happening? Where is this happening? So what I'm gonna do is I'm, click, I'm gonna click on this box. I'm gonna press on, it showed you how you can pick and of course, what it first does, it uh, changes the, the flowchart a bit. And uh, it does a bit of highlighting. On the right side, we can find the root cause analysis over here. And uh, I'll first explain the flowchart. So how, you, how to read this flowchart over here. So what I've done here is that I'm now investigating uh, the, the, the uh, process step called state pending others action. And I would like to see, are there any correlation to other process steps to it? Uh, so in the red, this creates sort of a heat map. In the red, it obviously demonstrates what is happening more often. In blue, it demonstrates it's happening less often. So if I look at, for example, uh, the, 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 just to understand how to read this. So on the left side, uh, in the available user info, we have 14%. So this means that out of all of the cases which go through state pending others action, 14% of the time, 
the case also goes through the available user info. Uh, conversely, uh, out of the cases that do not go through state pending other action, the 31% of the cases go through available user info. Uh, so it's basically a comparison of uh, the root cause analysis target versus the world. So it makes a division of, it compares these cases against every other case. Now, uh, the root cause analysis itself, uh, what we have here is, a, it is a influence analysis. So what it does is it makes a comparison of these different case attributes. So we have the assignment group, internal team 32, we have the internal team 12, location Helsinki and so on. It makes a comparison of how do cases associated with these particular case attribute values compared to the overall average. So if I so remember this 6% over here, if I remove the root cause analysis target from here, we see that the pending others action is 6%, 3,900 cases. Uh, so it makes a like it makes a comparison of what's the difference towards the average performance. So when we look at the internal team 32, we see that out of the cases which go through internal team, uh, which have an assignment group called internal team 32. 40% of those cases have a process step called state pending others action. And this is now about 34 percentage points more than the overall average of 6%. And uh, what this calculation also tells you is that there are about uh, 1,395 cases which are extra. So if internal team 32 was performing as average, uh, the actual number would be something like, um, let me see, so it would be, yeah, so so the 40% is about, so the, the internal team 32 has 4,100 cases which have this event, uh, no, that it's a total amount of cases done by internal team 32 is about 4,000. 40% of those, 1.7 thousand um, cases, they have this event type. And out of 1,700 cases, 1,400 are extra, which means that on average it should be 300. But now that, why, why do we do, uh, why do we do this comparison? The, the, the reason why we do this comparison is that um, we want to, we want to understand like the deviations and uh, we see that the high, highest deviation and based on a calculation done by the process analyzer is about the contribution is about 35 percent to the overall average. Here we have the work configuration of the workstation and it, it makes this ranking of uh, where are the biggest influencers of this behavior and uh, based on that you can get a bit of an idea of where to start looking into where are certain behaviors happening, where the certain issues happening. Uh, maybe I can demonstrate this with a bit of a simpler example. So if I go to the case duration and I want to know where are the cases which take more than 20 weeks. So I'll, I'll, make, I'll make this uh, filtering or rather I will just put there show root causes for the selection. So I'm going to do a root cause analysis on cases where end-to-end -end duration is more than 20 weeks or 20, 20 weeks or more. So now we can see from the flow chart that when there are cases which are taking a lot of time, we see a lot more this behavior. We see a lot more of this waiting, waiting for something, which is not unexpected. But it's just demonstration of how how we can see with just few clicks uh, what are the process behaviors within cases that are taking very much time. Uh, coming back to the root cause analysis, if I just want to kind of get a bit of an understanding of which groups are performing better or worse, I can now see that these are the teams that are not doing so well. So these teams, for example, the external team nine has a 14 percentage point tendency. So 14% of the cases take 20 weeks or more. I can also look at 
the other side. So we can take a look at teams which do not have this behavior as much and we see that internal team five, they never have cases where the 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 rest of the end-to-end -end duration is 20 weeks or more. Um, and of course you can watch them side by side, you can uh, see the comparison of where are the, uh, with, uh, the ones with the negative value over here, they are the better performing ones, the ones with a positive value, they are like contributing more. Okay, uh, well that, that's just the introduction of um, root cause analysis and uh, what you can do with the tool. I want to touch upon one more subject before we get to the questions, and that is the step three. So so far, I have now I, I have talking I have been talking about this uh, three step process. So you start with the discovering the as is. You then go to identifying issues. Uh, we, this is like uh, what I talk talk about so far. This, this is the short term, um, short term of the process mining. You want to kind of understand what's the now. Now let's talk about the third step, which is the um, monitor, monitoring and improving over time. So you can use all of this data, but like uh, besides process discovery, we have the dashboards, which I mentioned already really early on in the presentation. So you can use the dashboards in a lot of ways to dig into uh, the long-term trends of things and you can also look at specific KPIs and of course you kind of would like to get a bit of an understanding of or let's say like uh, SLA breaches uh, you might want to understand uh, what are the resolution times and for these purposes we do have ready-made dashboards which I would be very happy to demonstrate uh, like uh, how to use them and then yeah well of course uh, at any time when you have questions after this we will get to Q&A so as I mentioned earlier you can you, we have these ready-made dashboards for the service now and service management application and uh, just a couple of examples if I go to the operations overview uh, this is a kind of a, just a general level uh, collection of charts where you can see uh, the overall picture. Uh, we also have the like uh, some filters over here you can use. So I'm, I'm just gonna use this one to clarify uh, the, the the flow chart. Um, so this is the same flow chart I've uh, demonstrated in the process discovery, and you can of course take certain angles. Uh, I don't have anything pre-made but yeah I will just kind of demonstrate overall how all of this works and uh, in here we have the case count trend, we have the SLA breach percentage trend uh, count, we have the case, pro uh, case attribute profiling over here so if you want to look at certain numbers uh, we can look at the, how many cases are each company uh, departments, uh, uh, how many cases do they have and in here we have just a bit of an overview of like what's the end-to-end -end SLA lead times in different parts of the company and in here we have the average durations of different states of the tickets. So we can for example see over here in the purple we have the event count or yeah event count uh, then we can see how long does each event take. So we can see for example state pending others action it takes on average six days but it's not as common so it's not necessarily a huge issue but you can get a bit of a general understanding of what's going on. Um, number of events and uh, I mentioned the resolution times so if I go to lead time active to resolved this is another angle you can take to analyze your daily operations. So what we have in the top left, we have just like some key figures. So here we have the case count. Uh, in here we will have the uh, the case durations. Uh, so in here with average, uh, this is the average uh, resolution time. So from state active to state resolved. Uh, I believe uh, you can actually modify these uh, if you want to take a closer look. So how this has been done is that it takes the last state active, to, uh, excuse me, 
yeah, the last uh, set active to first uh, set resolved. And in the, it, based on the timestamps, it uh, looks at each of the cases, uh, what are the duration between these two event types. And then uh, it will make a, it, it, it just calculates the average of all of these end to end lead times. In the middle here, we have this distribution of how long the resolution times are. So we can see, for example, that 60% of all of the tickets are resolved within the same day. So that's a zero day duration or like zero to one. It's like, yeah, it's about 70%. We see that the parental limit is roughly in three, four days. So we have the accumulative value and here the 82% uh, means that 82.5% of the cases are resolved within three days. So from zero to three days, and then the remainder uh, of 17.5%, uh, 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 they take longer than three days. So that's what you can read from this. In, in the top right, uh, we have this analysis of all of the closed cases. How, how long did it take them to be resolved? And then you kind of get a bit of a time trend of like, have there been some spike? So 19th percentile spiking up over here is a kind of a indication that there have been some extra long cases which have been uh, resolved in certain months. And what you can do here as well is uh, you have the kind of a breakdown based on location. You can take a look at the company how long are the durations in the certain subsections of the company. So we can see, for example, if I do this over here, uh, we see that tickets which have this combination of information have taken the longest, just as an example. Uh, here in the root cause analysis, we can see like uh, where, where do we have most, uh, what case attributes have contributed most to the uh, cases being re resolved in more than three days. And uh, we can see the very, ex um, very predictable case attributes such as like the stage, uh, the ticket was canceled at some point, there has to be an SLA breach. And we can see like how, how often within the certain cases, this behavior has occurred. And in this one, we have a, demonstration of the standard deviation median duration uh, of the cases. You can understand the median duration as the baseline performance. So the lower the bubble is, the better. And then standard deviation you can understand as the outliers. So the more left you are, the better. So if we look at this one, we have the external team nine. Their base performance is 12 days, but they have had cases which have taken up to 12 plus 76 days. So 78 days, about three months. That's been their like the longest resolution time uh, of a ticket. So that's a, that's like one example of how you can monitor the daily operations. Um, before we get to questions, I would like to just demonstrate uh, one more dashboard and this is the conformance one. So conformance you can just uh, use to uh, monitor how how well are the operations conforming with the design process. So like I mentioned in, very early on in the in the presentation that everyone has an idea of how the process looks, how it should look, and then there's how does it actually work. So the conformance analysis is based on um, a certain uh, BPMN design. And uh, based on the BPMN, uh, you, you can get this of a overview of what are the good cases and what are so-called bad cases. So in, the, uh, in here, we have the original design. And in, in the process, I have defined here that we can have task created, task open in either order. And then we have the state active. It can either go straight to resolved or it goes through to awaiting user info, is resolved, it's closed, and it's closed. So 
that gives a bit of a, like, you, we can see here that this, these are, we have this many good cases, this many bad cases, this is the duration of good cases, this is how much the deviating cases are taking long, uh, how long they're taking on average, and of course we have, we have the survey percentage over here. In center we have the top violations, so in here we have for example state active occurred directly after state with a user info. This might not be an issue, but from the design point of view, if you have designed the process to be that, uh, so it, it, it refers to that we had state active, it went to await a user info, it went back to state active. But because the design says this is not accept, acceptable behavior, that's why like we have this as a top violation. Uh, you can use this kind of a, uh, for drill down purposes. Like we we have a bunch of stuff over here, but uh, I would be happy to demo in more detail at some other time. But in the, in the dashboards, I always I often get questions like, are the dashboards static or live? Uh, they're live, so if I want to look at, like I have this uh, this table over here of a kind of a breakdown of where are the better performing company uh, subdivisions and where the worst one. So I can, for example, I can look at this one, I see the conformance level is only 25%. So I can just click this, make a filter rule out of it. It will create this uh, calculation of this particular subset of the company, and I can see that for servoid maintenance in this case, the biggest is, uh, conformance violation is that the, we have the evaded vendor, and we can also use the flowchart to, to just with a with a very quick glance see that yeah, this is indeed the case that about this percent of the time this is happening. And so, um, but that's like a, our conformance dashboard. I, and as you can see, we have plenty of more, but I, I'm afraid uh, we're a bit limited on time. And I would like to have the opportunity to ask some questions as well.